Hey guys and welcome to this video. So today I'm gonna show you start to finish how I made this headphone stand with my CNC machine. If you haven't seen my CNC machine yet, I highly encourage you to check out the playlist up here where I built my CNC machine from scratch. In my final video quite a few of you asked me to make a video about the whole process from start to finish. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So let's hop right over to the computer and start with the cat and cam. So now here we are on the PC inside of Fusion 360, which is the CAD and CAM which I used to design the parts that I cut on my CNC machine. So first off we are going to design the model and then afterwards do the cutting path. Just to keep this example a bit shorter, I'm only gonna make the little thing on the bottom which keeps the headphone stand from tipping over. The whole headphone stand will look like this. This is the main part of which I already modeled it. And you can see here the main shape and also this pocket which is used to hide the electronics and the LEDs. But now we're going to design the part which goes in here and we'll make sure that this doesn't tip over as it is a rather narrow thing. So first off we're going to create a new sketch on the X and Y plane and then I here we draw the shape that we want and afterwards me go from this shape into three dimensions. So I'm gonna make a line and this will be 60 millimeters now 120, 60 to either side. So here, this is the base and that's okay for now. And then I'm also gonna make like the, some round pieces and then a little cutout so that it goes together with the other thing. So I'm gonna make another line. I need the cutout is about 23 millimeters. So that's how big I'm gonna make it. And I need it 40 millimeters wide. So this is the cutout and then let's just go up to like 40 millimeters height. And here we go with this cutout. Now I'm gonna make two arcs here that give it a bit more organic shape. Therefore, I take a three point arc here and then that seems about right. And I could just mirror this part here, but as it's so easy, I'm gonna do the thing again. And now I need to, okay. So now we have the 2D form of this part and we can stop the sketch and go into three dimensions. So at the moment this is only a flat thing in our three dimensional space, but I'm gonna select it here and then extrude. And I'm just gonna make it 19 millimeters as that's how thick my material is. And then we can here see that this is our three-dimensional part. This part is rather simple. Uh, on the other part, I would create more sketches on these faces and then sub subtract it from this. But I don't wanna make this a uh, Fusion 360 tutorial, but just a rough overview of my workflow. So we're gonna go into the cam settings now. And here we can see it's still the same view here but the options up here have changed. So we are going to make a new setup and the operation type is milling. We are going to select the origin point. This is the point where you set your zero. This we will have to later on the CNC, we will have to select this point as well. So I'm gonna select the bottom left corner of my stock. And then here instead of stock, I can say how big the stock is. I'm just gonna 
say that the side offset, let's make it five millimeters and the top is zero. Then we're gonna hit okay. And then we have a setup. In this setup, we are going to make a 2D contour now, which we will select this bottom contour of this. And then in here for the tooling, in here for the tooling, I'm gonna select the six millimeter flat end min. So now we have it in here, but this feed rate is a bit too high for my machine. So I'm gonna drop it down to 600. Now you could also set up a custom tool, but as I'm just playing around at the moment, I haven't done that yet. So coolant, we don't have coolant, we can disable that. And then in geometry, I'm also gonna add some tabs, which hold this workpiece in place after it's cut out. Because if you don't do that, and the CNC has cut out the entire piece, it will just fly away. And we don't want that. So tab with six millimeters is okay. I'm gonna increase it to two millimeter height. That's a bit better. Then let's go to height. Um, these are mostly okay. I just gonna put here minus 0 0.5 so that the CNC goes 0 0.5 millimeters deeper as the material is so that it is, is through and not has a li bit, little bit left as it isn't that precise here. And here in the passes menu, we're also gonna select multiple depths as I can't cut 19 millimeters in one pass. I'm gonna select two millimeters depth of cut. My, ma my machine isn't too strong, so that's about the maximum I can go. The rest seems fine, and so I'm gonna hit OK. Now it has created the toolpath, and here we can see what the machine will do. It will go down here, and then go around and go down further. And here you can also see the tabs. So that looks about okay. I, I could also simulate it, but this looks fine and this part isn't too difficult. So we're gonna go to post process and give it here a name. For example, that and then click here on post. I also already have these settings right for the gripple, so that's it's the right kind of g-code. Post, save it in the right point and then click save. Here you no now can see the g-code that it has generated and you could also edit it in here. Now I'm gonna with here f file save as I will save it on a USB stick that I can take over to the other PC at the CNC. So now that we have the G code on a USB stick, I fire up my CNC PC and start Universal G Code Sender. This is the program I use to control my CNC machine. To hold the material down to the CNC, I'm just using double sided tape as these parts all have really big surface area where I can use enough tape so that it holds very well. You could also use clamps, but I didn't make those yet, so that's gonna be a project for the future. After the material is fixed on the CNC machine, I decided where I want to have my zero point and then I zero mach my machine there. This is important so that the program knows where the workpiece is, as I previously defined this zero point in the software. Then I just load the G-code into the Universal G-code Center, start the spindle and click send. Now we can watch how the machine cuts out all the pieces.
this is where a normal CNC operation is finished and from now on I'm just gonna quickly talk about how I finished up this headphone stand. So next I drilled some holes. I could have done this on the CNC as well, that would have been a bit more precise, but I didn't know in the beginning how exactly I'm gonna clamp it together, but I decided to use um, screws. So I drilled some holes through and used screws to clamp it together. Funnily, the only screws that were long enough that I have are M3, which Normally I would use something a bit thicker like M4 or M5 for such a project, but these were the only screws that I have, so that's what I went with. After I had drilled the holes, I used some screws to clamp it together and then sanded all around it. On the top I sanded a bit of an arc, so that the headphones sit on there nicely and the corners don't push into the foam of the headband. I also painted the parts black to give it a bit more clean aesthetics and to match with the rest of my setup. Next it was time to add the electronics. I just used some LED strips from China which I chopped in pieces and then soldered them together. I connected up a cheap RGB controller which I also bought from China and that the electronics are finished. Now I put together the sandwich and used the screws to hold it together. Finally, I just cut off the rest of the screws as they were a bit too long. And this is how the final product looks like. I really like it and it finally it follows the trend we saw on CES with everything RGB. I didn't really need RGB. Just one single color would have been enough, but I had so these RGB parts on hand, so I used that. To hide the wires, I just drilled a hole through the desk where the stand's gonna be, so I don't see any wires. I really like how the glow of this ring is very uniform and you can't see any dots where the LEDs are. That's because they are so far from the edge so that the light has enough space to spread out. So that's it. Now you know about how I use my CNC and a bit more about the workflow. If you liked this video, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe. I also have Twitter and Instagram handles linked down below where you can see some sneak previews and other fun stuff. Thanks for watching and until next time.